Yeah. So we, we made them all nice and, and shiny and polished for you guys. Um, but it was the second CD that where we did all of the adding the different tracks to it. So last year, you might remember, um, of course, I feel like COVID ate two years of our lives. I agree. I don't know what, what year we're in anymore. Um, I did a live stream the other day from the, the Dickens Fest out here. Uh, I was the snow queen in the Dickens Fest, and as I'm live streaming it, I, I, you know, I didn't even think about what I was saying. I'm so overwhelmed by being around chimney sweeps and all the Dickens characters and having our own floats, and, and it was so much fun. But when I watched the live stream back later, apparently I'm going, and here we are at 2022 Dickens Fest. And watching it back, I'm going, it's not 2022. <laughs> Why am I saying that? Because I want this year to be over again with all of these strains and Omicron and Delta and all the rest of that right. already. But um, so it's definitely Corona's even part of my brain, so you know I'm losing track of time. Um, but so what we did uh, originally, a few now going a few years back before uh, Corona shut everything down a couple of years ago, was we had gone back into the studio and we recorded five uh, new tracks, thinking that they would come to fruition and be a whole new um, version of or new songs for um, a new Winter Carol song, uh, tra- new Winter Carol CD that we would create. Mm-hmm. Not being called Winter Carol, it would just right. be like a whole be, new Christmas. It'd or be a, a follow-up album. holiday album, right? Right, and uh, so we wound up the way that we usually record is we go into the studio, we do a few tracks, we're with our producer, and then he goes back home. And we usually take a couple of months off and go on tour or write some more, and then he comes back a few months later so we can listen back to those tracks and we can hear them with fresh ears and see what needs to be added or taken out or if we need to start from scratch or if it's okay and nothing needs to be done. But, of course, we never had that opportunity. So we had these five Christmas songs, and when Corona hit last year, we said, you know what, we just want to put these songs out for people to, to have. I mean, everybody's having... You know, there's so much fear, there's so much separation, there's so much isolation. Um, it would be nice if we could give fans new music that they could have for Christmas time. So we put four of those tracks out, and it became our EP, Here We Come a Caroling. But they were never officially on an album. And then we had this one other track that we were holding on to that we recorded at around the same exact time because we were in that festive Christmassy spirit, and uh, that was Coventry Carol. So... Um, so when we decided to put this back out again with the re, reissue, re, re, um, remixed, remastered versions of the other songs, it made perfect sense to do a double CD, a deluxe set, add some of the, um, not only the new ones that we did on Here We Come Caroling, but this extra track, and also some live versions that we did mm-hmm. here at Minstrel Hall in our home when we just did it as it would be for if we had a Christmas party here. So you're able to you know to see that visually on YouTube, on the YouTube channels, but now you get the audio tracks as well, and that's kind of just like you sitting in our home, in our living room here at Minster Hall, surrounded by our friends and family with the fireplace blazing and the garland strung around and all the rainbow lights around us, and it's just that warm, beautiful, family, love, joyous feeling that surrounds you through the music, and I think it really was captured and it, it embodied um, know exactly the vibe that we've got going on here and the energy so the live so, tracks were actually recorded at minstrel hall absolutely yeah no, very no, cool <laughs> we didn't like double take do double tracks on anything <laughs> we didn't like you know replace anything that is in its pure and honest essence when wow. Richie says worse than all you know <laughs> so if there's any mistakes but um but yeah that they are like one take deals and and it was matched up you know we we they recorded the video as well at the same time and the videos were on youtube but that's exactly how we sound when we're just sitting around playing we've got our bandmates in and and we're just having a a grand old time playing these songs for the holidays well we're going to play one of those live ones now but i got to say those uh those holiday songs are or those holiday parties that you have at minstrel hall are something of legend uh, I remember hearing about them before, and then you talked, I asked you about them a few interviews ago, and you said that, like, the neighborhood kids come out, and you guys just make it like a block party in your house. We do, it's, and it's one of those things that becomes not only just friends, but it's friends of friends who then bring friends. And I walk through my kitchen and say, who is that person? I've never seen that person before. And it's like, oh, that that came with that guy over there. Well, who's that guy? Well, he came with her. Oh, her I know. Okay. All right. <laughs> We're 
tracking people down. <laughs> well, we're going to give you a live cut. Again, this is uh, new stuff released for the fans off the Winter Carols reissue. It's a double CD, a Digipack edition. We're going to talk about the artwork. We're going to talk about uh, lots of stuff this hour with Candice, including the other album that kind of slipped off the radar there, Nature's Light, uh, an amazing album all about nature. And there is a great winter song on there as well. So it's going to fit the mold of today's show. But first, uh, live from Minstrel Hall, the Herald Angels are singing. Hark to Herald Angels, O come all ye faithful, raw with all the warts. I didn't hear any warts in there. But uh, live from Minstrel Hall, Blackmore's Night, uh, the amazing Candace uh, on vocals. I got to say, your voice just gets better with age. Every album, you just Thank get you more, so more powerful, more clear. Um, and Richie will say it's, it's probably from me yelling at my children at this point. So uh, you know, I'm working on those, that muscle. <laughs> there you now go. I've got a preteen and a nine-year-old boy. It's like, oh, my goodness. Here we go. Fasten your safety belt. But uh, whatever it takes to strengthen it, you know. Yep, yep. <laughs> I remember you saying that they were starting to get into music themselves last time we talked. Was, I think it was about two years ago. Um, so how is that developing? Are they? Uh, are they? Uh, are you going to be the new Cousels or the new Partridge family? Are we going to have? I was waiting for the Partridge family one. <laughs> I asked, actually asked my my kids if I could open up for them at this point. You know, <laughs> on, on tour somewhere. Um, yeah, they're amazing. I mean, my daughter is completely just absorbed by music. She can play guitar and piano and cello and she has this incredible pure voice and like a three and a half to four octave range where she hits notes that are off the guitar without even warming up and I said to my husband do you think we should like cultivate that and get her some guitar lessons like I can find somebody local and he looked at me and he's like are you really? kidding me like why am I getting a guitar teacher for yeah. her? <laughs> I was gonna <laughs> like, say you got the best like, guy right there next that's to what you said. I was like I didn't mean I, what I meant was you know it takes a special kind of person to teach somebody like they have to be very patient and you know sometimes <laughs> sometimes my husband isn't the most patient of people that's all i meant <laughs> i didn't mean that he couldn't teach the guitar i just meant on, on a patience level you know sometimes oh, okay. I'm frustrated that was all but she i we didn't go down the route where we got somebody you know extraneous to come to the house so my husband taught her the chords and she naturally absorb them so i often walk into the room and the two of them they'll just yell chords out e minor e, you know uh g major and and she's doing all of the things and uh like making all the shapes and the two of them are jamming together and it's it's wow. beautiful it's amazing i love it we actually just went to her cello uh recital and her her chorus recital at the school here and you could hear her her voice ringing out like a bell like even though we were sitting all the way in the back and uh it's beautiful and my son has taken he told me you know he's a percussionist um, he feels the rhythm more than getting involved with anything else. So um, when he was supposed to take up an instrument at school, or he had the option to, mm -hmm. I put down percussion, and he came running home and said, Mom, guess what I got, you know, guess what I'm going to be playing. And I said, what? And he said, the bells. And I'm like, I don't know what the bells are. <laughs> what does that mean? That's <laughs> like a, just a triangle? Like, what are they giving you? But apparently it's almost like a, like a xylophone where he's able to do the hammering wow. notes onto the, you know. But so it's, it's still... He still gets to tune his ear, which is great, but he also gets his percussive side out. And, uh, right. Yeah, everybody plays their own part in, in, in the Partridge family. <laughs> <laughs> well, I remember we heard your daughter for the first time uh, on Starlight Starbright, your solo uh, nursery rhyme album, basically. That's right. And the yeah, lullabies. That was a long time ago. And now she's also doing uh, background vocals on uh, uh, Silent Night on this album. Oh, okay. So she's doing the way high angelic voice that uh, that mommy wasn't able to hit those notes so she's uh she's hitting those notes perfectly for me and both kids were actually singing back up on nature's light too on uh going to the fair so we've got everybody the whole family is like involved with it now and it's just i love it i love that so much <laughs> wow one of the things that i've always uh noticed about you guys and that is you always pick an obscure cover uh, on all your regular studio albums. Of course, you did uh, uh, Linda Ronstadt on uh, All Our Yesterdays, uh, Dancer in the Moon, Had You Rye Heap. The new album, which we're going to get to talking about in just a few minutes, uh, has a Sarah Brightman song. How do you guys decide, and when did that become a tradition, to to take an obscure cover and and, uh, and Blackmoreize it? Yeah, and don't forget Celluloid Heroes by The Kinks. I Got You, Babe, by... Sunny and Cher, the more you're mentioning, the more I'm thinking, oh, my gosh, what about this one? <laughs> you know, right. like, there's so many of them. Uh, yeah, 
I think, you know, it's, you call them obscure, but I think for us it's just our natural musical pace. Those are the songs that we listen to. Those are the songs that we get drawn to. Um, oftentimes, uh, when we would have our, our little gatherings, which has, have, of course, been you know diminished a lot by the recent plague that's going around, but um, we used to have a time where we would go out every week and just like sit with our our friends and our, our family, and everybody would pass like very old old fashioned, where we'd all pass around the acoustic guitar and everybody would sing a song and um, an acoustic song, and that would kind of you know remind us, oh, remember that one, like the R- Linda Ronstadt one or Celluloid Heroes were exa- perfect examples of those. Um, where a friend of ours would pick up the guitar and start playing it, and we'd be like, oh my gosh, do you remember that song? That was a great song. I uh, haven't heard that one in a long time. And that uh, just kind of stirred up all of those emotions and feelings all over again, as music often does. Mm. So um, for us, it's really just songs that we, we've we heard, that we've loved. We might have moved on from, but then as soon as we get you know, to remembering them again, we have that nostalgia and, and reminiscing as soon as we hear them and, um, and decide to, to try to play them on our, our own and give them our own little twist. Because like I always say, there's no point in doing it exactly like someone has done it already. Because yeah, why, why bother? Right, exactly. Unless you can add something different to it, you know, or add your own stamp or your own, you know, individuality to it. And sometimes that doesn't even work. We've had things in the studio we've we've attempted and been like, you know what? It's in my mind. I can I can kind of hear it, but it's just not coming out the way we want it to come out. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and so that will then stay in the closet or on the cutting room floor and and never really make it to an album. But those songs that you do hear that we did cover, those are the ones where we felt like we were able to kind of just reinterpret just enough to have our own style while still having, you know, the true traditional essence of, of those amazing artists that brought brought it to the world. And we were able to really enjoy our own our own feelings that uh, that we've had for decades with, through those songs. So uh, that's what you hear, sort of our channeling those vibes and those emotions that those songs gave to us in the first place. I can understand um, Second Element, uh, Sarah Brightman's song. I can understand the Linda Ronstadt because they are two amazing vocalists, and that would fit right in your wheelhouse. Uh, I can understand Celluloid Heroes. I can understand uh, Rainbow Blues, Jethro Tull, which you guys covered. Um, I can't get my head around the two of you on I Got You, Babe. That just <laughs> It just seems like a weird song stuck in there somewhere. How, what made you do that song? And then we'll move on. You don't, you don't think Sonny and Cher when you think of me and Richie, really? No. <laughs> no. I'm going to break out my bell bottoms. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not. Oh, my goodness. Um, that's really funny. We, that's one of those songs where it's just, okay, then, then we have the other side. The other side of Blackmore's Night. You know we have many, many facets. And that was probably one of the ones where it was just so nostalgic for, for Richie where he would, like, take, that's one of those take your beer mugs and just swing it back and forth sort of songs that everybody gets to sing together. <laughs> one of those old songs where uh, everybody just, like, sat at the table singing it, and we were just like, we got to do this just for fun. That was just, just a, fu- a for fun song. As a matter of fact, it's funny that you mentioned the amazing vocalists of, of Sarah Brightman and um, and Linda Ronstadt, because that's actually sometimes those are the songs that make me not want to do it because those vocalists are so powerful and amazing. And did I ever tell you the, the Sarah Brightman story? Have no. I mentioned this to you in fact? Oh, let me tell you. This is a funny story. All right. So we were in Hamburg, and um, we were friends. We knew uh, Sarah's producer, who she's been with for decades. Uh, his name is Frank. And, of course, that's one of Sarah's home base. That's where she she has a house there, and they record at the studio, at Frank's studio there. So Richie and I and the band Blackmore's Night are playing in um, an opera house in Hamburg, Germany. So we get the phone call that Frank's going to come, and he's bringing Sarah to our show. So I get the news about this. And, of course, anybody who knows Sarah's Bre- Sarah Brightman's voice, who is basically everybody, um, knows that she is just this incredible powerhouse. Mm -hmm. She does pop at opera, so like that popper thing, but she can sing opera with the best of them. The range will just knock you off your feet. She's incredible. And we've seen her in concert a bunch of times and just blown away every time. And the work that Frank does with her is just astounding. And so um, I hear that she's now coming to the show. So now I panic because I'm in panic (laughs) mode before shows as it is. You know, I'm always like, you know, I'm human. I get nervous every time before I go on stage. And Richie and I have very different ways of dealing with it. He likes to hide behind the curtains and look out at people, at the audience, and kind of psychoanalyze different people in the audience and go, you know what, it's okay, they're just people, not a big deal, we could do this. 
And I like to hide in the room and say, I don't want to see anybody until I get out there, and then I want the lighting guy to turn it on 11 and blind me so I have no <laughs> retina left, so I can't see anybody. <laughs> and then I'll relax a couple of songs into it, and then I'll be able to talk to people and see people. So we have very different ways of dealing with it. But um, hearing Sarah Brightman is coming to your show is slightly terrifying. So I said to Richie, oh, my God, I don't know if I can do this. I don't know if I can get out there and sing if Sarah Brightman's going to be out there. He then... And this is the only time I will ever allow my husband to lie to me in our 33 years together at this point. He said, you know what? We got the phone call. She's not coming. She's not feeling well. Frank, Frank will come, but she's not coming. So I look up and I see this girl in, in uh, or this woman in one of the opera boxes. And it looks just like Sarah. And he, I said, doesn't that look just like her? He said, yeah, it looks like her, but it's not because she's not coming. I'm telling you, you're fine. Don't worry about it. She, you know, she said she was sorry that she couldn't make it. I'm like, okay. <laughs> Believing him. Went out performed the songs of the show, had a great time, connected with the audience, brought people on stage, we sang, we danced, we, Richie was handing out beers. It was one of the best ones. We had so much fun. Later on, curtain goes down, lights go down, we're standing backstage, and my, my, uh, our manager says to us, uh, you know, somebody wants to talk to you, Frank wants to come backstage. So Frank comes back, and who is he with? He's with Sarah. <laughs> And now my jaw has dropped, and I can't speak. And I turn into Jello Girl, where I can't actually form words. My whole body feels like it's Jello, <laughs> just like about to fall on my face. And she is the sweetest, kindest woman. And she's with that beautiful, gorgeous English accent of hers, just saying, oh, "It was so lovely. Oh, it was so lovely." She has so much fun at our show, and. That was the only time I had allowed my husband to lie to me because he told me afterwards he lied to me just to get me through it to make sure that I could I could you know believe myself enough to perform without you know being so nervous that Sarah Brightman was watching me right um, or watching wow. us perform but uh, she's she's incredible and we were I was so happy that we were able to do the song Second Element um, on Nature's Light and the way that Richie plays the electric guitar on that song at the end and the way it just builds and builds I still get goosebumps when I hear it. Now, has have you gotten feedback from her? Yes, actually, I wound up texting to to. I keep forgetting about the time frame uh, where there's the time difference between he, here and and anywhere. Really, yeah, about eight hours. <laughs> so I wrote when we record, we record you know late at night, and then I texted Frank, and I'm like, "Do you think this would be okay if we cover this?" And he was just stunning. He's just like, "It would be it would be an honor if you guys did it. We would absolutely love it." He, it was I think the first song that that he ever actually did with her. So he was so excited about the fact that we did it. And they, they loved it. They loved the version that we came out with. They were so excited to hear it. So, And, of course, when I texted him, I believe I woke him up at about three thirty, four o'clock in the morning. His time. <laughs> so for him to be that nice and enthusiastic when someone wakes him up out of bed at that time to get a text was, was pretty wow. good. <laughs> wow. But, um, but I love, we love that song. There's two versions of the song that she, she originally did. One is more of a love song. And one of them is this song, which is like an ode to water and to nature, and I thought was perfect for Blackmore's Night. And uh, Richie and I actually kind of had a little tug of war there. He wanted to do the other song because he thought it made more sense lyrically. I love these lyrics and what they depict and, and uh, you know, how, how it just, like, just wound up being resonating perfectly with what the essence of Blackmore's Night is all about. So I actually won that, that, uh, that tug of war on that one. And and he's glad I did. Now he looks back at it and he's like, you're right. You know, you were right about that one. So, uh, and that's probably the only time he'll ever say those words. So <laughs> of course. Well, let's, let's play that one. I wasn't planning on playing it, but now I'm curious. I want to, I want the listeners to get their, the response on that. Uh, this is second element, uh, the Blackmore's night version. And again, this is off the other brand new album called nature's light. And we'll talk a little bit about this on the other side. It's their first studio album, brand new studio album in about six, seven years. So we're going to find out how this came about, and the theme of it is pretty unique, especially in the world we're living in now. This is Second Element. We'll be back with Candace after this. The closing track, track 10, Second Element, off the other new album released this past year, Nature's Light, the first new studio album by Blackmore's Night in six years, uh, the follow-up to All Our Yesterdays. And one of the unique things on this album is that, uh, as Candace was saying, uh, the children are getting more involved, and Autumn and Rory uh, are both singing harmonies on this. Is that correct? Autumn and Rory are singing, yes, that's right. They're singing on uh, Going to the Fair. Okay. The two of them sing, uh, of course, the children's part. It's such a joyous song. 
um, the thing with Nature's Light is that it actually brought us into, in, it, it was such a cathartic album for both of us. And the reason is because the year prior to that, we were going through some very difficult things with loss. We had both, Richie and I had both lost um, major components of our family. My, my dad passed um, uh, after a year's battle with cancer. Richie's brother passed um, after battling with COPD. Uh, our cat of 16 years passed away the day after we got home from tour. Mm -hmm. Richie's best friend in the music industry. Every, just so many people that were just incredible in our lives and influences, daily inspirations and influences were taken away from us uh, all in the year 2018. Mm -hmm. And so we went back into the studio at the end of that year uh, and the beginning of 2019, but I didn't feel able to really create from a joyous perspective because I just felt like this empty shell after all we had been through in the year prior. Mm -hmm. And when we started writing again and we started coming up with music, I started kind of weaving in these ideas of, when, like for example, when my father passed, I started seeing these signs that I know he was sending to me. Um, I'm a big believer in, in paying attention to signs from the other side. And everywhere I would go, I've had multiple signs, but one of them that was very prevalent was I would find feathers in bizarre places, in the kitchen, in my car, all these white feathers, like in the dining room, um, just picking them up off the floor, off the table. They would just appear. So the lyrics wound up being to a song that Richie, the music Richie came up with, I started writing about the ideas of these feathers that were presenting themselves to me, and it became a song called Feather in the Wind mm -hmm. off of Nature's Light. Um, so once I started that idea of writing again and opening up again and being having that writing is you know part of being vulnerable, being creative. It's putting those puzzle pieces, puzzle pieces together of, of stories, but also making them rhyme and then you know put, putting part of yourself like a journal entry like out there to the world. And so there's so many things that you know come into play when you're you're writing lyrics. Um, I'm not the person who just like rhymes you know throws things away with their rhyming. Like, I put a lot of thought and feeling and emotion into it. Um, but the great thing about Nature's Light was by the end of that album, I was able to write songs like Going to the Fair, which were much more joyous and about us, you know, finally getting back to the Renaissance fairs and, and you know, the escape from the modern-day pressures and stress and really just enjoying life again and seeing, smelling the flowers and feeling the, the sunshine on your face and, and skipping down the lane going to these fairs and uh, and it, once we were able to do those songs again inviting our children to sing along on it and it just became this beautiful thing but that whole entire album was almost like a major therapy session <laughs> of every single song we went through which is kind of ironic because by the time we were done and we were able to put it out to the world the whole world shut down and we weren't able to get it out in 2020 when it was supposed to come out in April or May of 2020 everybody shut down and then we were all going through you know, something together. So mm -hmm. although Richie and I had been just going through absolute hell in 2018, everybody went through it in 2020. So when we had this album and we were finally able to get it out to the world, it was sort of like the album that healed us was now out there to be able to bring some musical healing to everyone else. And, and it was perfect timing. I feel like everybody really needed that sort of music at that point. Your albums, your music has always drawn so strongly from nature itself, whether it be the forests or the rain or the sun or the moon. You've always had this, uh, this nature's power in your music. And this album seems to have put it all together. You've got, uh, you've got everything on here, the twisted oak, the feather in the wind you were just talking about. Uh, you're talking about the light, the sun, uh, the darkness of December, um, the cold. It just seemed like all these songs were written to, at the same time for this album in mind. Is that what you're saying? Well, we're honoring every element, I feel like. And at that point, I honestly didn't, I wasn't <laughs> consciously writing it like that. But mm -hmm. in retrospect, looking back on it, um, when we decided to name it Nature's Light, and I really looked at all the themes throughout every single song, it kind of really looked like that's what we had done consciously, even though I wasn't aware of it at the time. But I'm, I guess that I'm, I was pulling on all of these different elements throughout nature to sort of heal my, my grieving soul. And ironically, that's also what wound up happening, you know, when the pandemic hit. We weren't able to, to see, you know, to get close to people, to be around people. So 
the kids and I, we would go through these long walks through the woods, which is what we've always been strong proponents of in the first place. You know, we've always told people, unplug, get away from the stress, go back to nature, that will heal you. And it mm-hmm. really, really did. And But the great thing, I mean, you know, there's always the silver lining at the end of, uh, you know, whenever there's a, a cloudy day or there's a storm coming. So for us, I was able to see a lot of other people, definitely during the pandemic, it looked like they'd been so tired of being in their homes for so long that I saw so many more people still, still distancing, but out walking their dogs through the woods or walking along the beach. The kids and I found new hobbies. We went out and we looked for, for sea glass, you know, like along the shore. And we saw so many people that were still separating, but feeling that ocean breeze on their faces or just walking through the woods and letting their kids pick up leaves or, or acorns and, and discover, you know, the simple things in life again. Mm-hmm. And we've always mentioned that, but now seeing other people, how they infused it into their lives to sort of heal them as far as, and, and they felt so much better for it. And uh, we were just looking around like, wow, you know, I, I guess it took something like this for people to kind of get back to right. the simplicity and the beauty and the healing of nature. And uh, so I hope that people still hold on to that, even when we all get back to normal. And I know we will, and I'm hoping that we will very, very soon. You know, it gets better every single day. But it'd be nice if people still remembered how nature did heal them during right. uh, those dark times. It's very. It's a very cathartic album. I enjoy it. Um, what's interesting is that you released it on vinyl. Thank you for that. As you know, I've got a vinyl store, and uh, it was very, very nice to be able to stock this in my shelves. Um, and it's on white vinyl. No, I'm sorry, yellow vinyl it came out. Uh, like the sun. Yeah, like the sun. So how is the album done for you? I mean, has uh, because it was released at a time when everything was up in the air, and it had been a long time since you were on the road, and your marketing machine, obviously, uh, six years since the last album. Uh, how has this album done? Is it finally getting legs? Did it get legs right out of the box? It did, actually. We, we were charting uh, in different regions around the world. We do pretty well, you know, especially New Age Billboard here. We always do well on their They're fantastic for us, that, that, uh, that genre is very accepting of us, whereas I feel like the other genres don't really know what we're doing still, you know, but but they always try to go, where can we fit you guys? So New Age Billboard was always great for us, so we charted there, uh, top ten there. We also did really well in the English folk tunes, uh, mm-hmm. char- English folk charts, which I think this is the first time we've ever charted over there. Germany is always great for us, Czech Republic, so we definitely were getting really good chart positions around the world. And, and But the thing about us is that not so much how strong it hits out of the box for us, it's, it's the longevity of it, so we still see like a consistent amount of people who are still discovering Blackmore's Night, who are still, you know, like maybe at this time of year they run a, a random search for Christmas songs or something and they come across us and they say, oh, what is this one? And then they find 25 years, which is now this year, 25 years worth of music. And, uh, and they're able to rediscover all the things that we'd had out since 1997. Actually, mm-hmm. I think it's next year that's 25. No, this is 24 years. Next year's 25, and what we're going to do is release all of the albums, since you're my, my vinyl buff, we're going to release all of the albums um, As a box on set? vinyl. Yeah, we're going to do special special like little packaging and, and everything and, uh, and new additions and adding lots and lots of really cool stuff to each one of the, uh, the albums. So, now, the albums were released on different labels over the years. Do you guys have the rights to, uh, to reissue everything? Have you, well, I'm sure Richie's a smart man, and he's been in the music business a long time. I'm sure that you guys have control on all that. Uh, Richie? very smart man but he's also 110 percent music so but we thank goodness have a very smart woman who's watching our back so uh (laughs) she she watches every she goes through those contracts with a fine tooth comb and she doesn't let anybody (laughs) try to rip us off because you know there's a lot of sharks oh yeah water you know as far as the music industry is concerned they will tie you up as much as they can whenever and wherever so is uh, ear music your label is ear music Ear music uh, is that your our label? our current label, and they were the label we started off with back in 1997. We okay. were with them for the first two albums, for Shadow as well as for Violet, and then we went over to SPV on um, on Fires at Midnight. We were with them for a whole bunch of years. Right, uh, and then Frontiers. Still, yeah, we're with Ear back again for, uh, well, they did the vinyl also on the EP for Here We Come a Caroling. They did green vinyl for, for the, you know, the holiday season. And that was last year. And so, yeah, we're with them again. And they put out Nature's Light on that yellow, oh. beautiful yellow vinyl. They did a double CD set as well as a, um, or a deluxe set 
set as well as the single set. Now, and when, they do great packaging. So I was uh, just going to say, let's talk a little bit about the packaging. The artwork sure. on uh, Winter Carols, uh, the the book has all the lyrics. You can sing along and carol with uh, Black Moors Night. But the imagery in there, uh, the, the snow-frosted forest with the moon cutting through uh, on the book uh, and, and the front cover, the, the, the warm light coming out of that cold picture of a, of a little cottage in the middle of nowhere. Uh, who does all this? It, it, it fits the music. It's very Renaissance Gothic uh, in yeah. many ways. Well, you know, they, what we did was we worked very closely with the record company. They, on Nature's Light, we had um, we actually had a friend of ours who was an artist who was able to take the depiction of what we wanted. And uh, Richie actually sketched out that, and he sent it over to her, and she did it immediately right overnight, and, and we sent that to the record company. But specifically for Winter Carols, um, we worked with the record label. They had their own artist. They sent us a good maybe 10 different ideas, mock-up ideas that they, you know, they came up with, and we kind of brought it back right to the uh, the idea of this one. We, we kind of were always just haunted by, it. again, the simplicity, the beauty, the illumination of that night sky with that incredible moon just overhead. But it was just perfect because, you know, the warmth is going on in those tiny little cottages. Mm-hmm. Everyone's sitting around that. The Christmas you almost want to peek in the party. window. You, you, you look yeah. at the cover and you're like, I'm going to go peek in the window there and exactly. see what's going on. It's not about, but that's kind of like us. You know, it's not about the commercialism and it's not about the... Uh, you know, we're not rocking around the Christmas tree and we're never going to probably sing any of the Bing Crosby or the chestnuts roasting on the open fire stuff, but we're going to bring it right back to brass tacks and make it very simple and right. pure and beautiful and honest. And uh, and I think those are the things that really touch your soul more than, uh, for me anyway, you know, everybody's got their own thing. I'm not into the, the bubblegum glossy stuff. I like that, that real honest, pure emotion. And I think that this really depicted it perfectly. Well, you have a new Christmas uh, package, but more importantly, I think, is you've got a brand new album to tour year-round behind with Nature's Light. When is it going to happen? It's a great question. And, you know, we've been talking. It's so funny because last year at this time we spoke to our agent and he said, well, you know, everybody's clamoring for spots, you know, to try to get in because everybody's been backlogged, you know, so there's so all the venues are, are like getting all booked up and <laughs> so we're trying to figure things out. But he told us, that it would be autumn of this year, and then the two variants hit, and then, you know, one after the other. And we got to keep in mind that Richie's of a, a certain age at this point, you know, so right. we got to make sure he's... And the other sad thing is that it used to be, back in the day, you know, I always make the, make references to, you know, since we're, we do Renaissance Medieval, but updated stuff, so I always used to say, well, you know, we're going to play the song. Whenever we would play on stage, I'd say, well, this song is going even further back than Renaissance. This song is dated B.C., and the reference was before Candace, you know. And then, ah. it was, then we would do something. I'd be like, well, this one was before, you know, B.C., which is before children. Now I'm going, it's B.C. before Corona. <laughs> 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 so, so before the plague hit. We always said we didn't, that was the reason we didn't want to go back to the Renaissance and medieval times was because of the plague. But apparently it found us anyway. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that happens. <laughs> right? But um, he had originally said sometime in the autumn, um, and, and it used to be back in the day, B.C., before Corona, where if somebody was sick or showed symptoms, you could say, you know what, here's some Robitussin, here's, you know, here's some aspirin or whatever, bring the fever down, take a Ricola after the show, go back, lay down, have some teas, chicken soup, relax, we'll get you the doctor. But you kick yourself in the butt, you get on stage, and you do your best that you can do. These days, if somebody shows a symptom of anything, it's everything shuts down for, you know, everybody has to quarantine and... And the whole, every, like dominoes, because you have a bunch of shows set up, so everything has to close. And it's, it's just so weird and so scary and so alien-esque, you know, for us to deal with. But um, right now we are in talks with the agent. I don't know if we're going to be, we're definitely not going to be going overseas anytime soon, which is a shame because we love those markets and love those fans. But we love you here, and you always give yes. Europe your best. This is, But this is the silver lining. <laughs> this is the good news, is that we're looking at dates here in America right now with our agent for either end of April, beginning and mid-May, or end of May and beginning of June. So there's okay. your silver lining. Right Make there. sure you get to Chicago, even better northwest Indiana. That way I can just oh, yeah. walk Indiana, down. Oh, yeah. I don't think we've ever played Indiana. That's definitely a good one. Yeah. Yeah. We've got some great casinos here. We've got some great theaters. So, you know, go to Chicago. Take care of those folks. But don't forget us here in the Hoosier Cornfields. Promise. We would never forget about you guys. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm going to play one more song off of... Uh, 
off the new uh, studio up, Nature's Light. Uh, again, I mentioned this one would have fit perfectly on Winter Carols. It's the opening track, Once Upon December. And uh, we'll be back to say goodbye right after this. This is New Music, Blackmore's Night. The time is nigh for a new Blackmore's Night album, Nature's Light. And uh, the opening track, Once Upon December. And as I said earlier in the hour, your voice gets better and better every album. And that closing right there where you were hitting all those different notes and octaves, awesome, Candice, awesome. Much time. Ladies and gentlemen, if you've enjoyed the show, you can continue to follow the group at Blackmore's Night. That's with an N, not a K. Even though you might think but with the Renaissance sound, it would be a K. Blackmore'sNight.com. <clears throat> and uh, you can order uh, the different albums. You can check out videos. You can keep up on the tour. So when they do come to Chicago in Northwest Indiana, you'll know. <laughs> <laughs> that was fly. That was very slick. I like that. Yeah, that yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, what have we not talked about? Anything in particular that uh, we got about two, three minutes left? Um, we're going to get to a song uh, on the Christmas album once again uh, to close out. But is there anything we haven't touched on? You know, well, I can always sit and talk with you forever, Tom. <laughs> so, <laughs> there's always stories for us to share. I feel like we're having... My, my afternoon coffee, and we're just like Terry. Sorry. Actually, the last one that you just played, uh, Once Upon December, um, that one was originally taken by a band called the New World Renaissance Band. Sing, uh, Owen Fife was the singer of that. He is an incredible minstrel. Who The original song where that came from was a song called Fuji, 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 which is Italian medieval descent. And he mm. introduced that song to us before I you know, changed the words. And I was listening to, I was reading a review the other day, which was kind of funny. The guy said, you know, I love this song so much. She's the only one who can actually tell a whole story without telling the story, the actual story. And it's true. Like, I keep saying, come and sit and I'll tell you the story. But I never actually do tell you what the story is. So we leave that in your mind to work out. Um, as far as future plans, we're really just looking forward to enjoying our wonderful holiday season with friends and family and putting all, all that positive energy out there for everyone around the world, including in your area, in Chicago and North, Northwest Indiana as well, mm-hmm. and the cornfields, like you said. The cornfields. Um, <laughs> and um, also that next year we, we're going to have, um, you know, which we'll have to do another interview on, hopefully. Oh, we'll yes. follow up with this one for our anniversary and all that amazing uh, amazing things we have planned for that. I've got a solo album that's six songs recorded already that will be out awesome. hopefully next year as well. We've got brand new, um, we're actually doing on our official YouTube channels, we've got a bunch of new videos that are um, that are timed and ready to be premiered for the last, uh, for the next few days, um, up, running up until Christmas time. So um, those lyric videos as well as other videos will be on there so everyone can tune in and, and put those on their playlist and just enjoy the beautiful, magical holiday season to those as well. So All wishing right. that to everyone and hopefully see you on the road in springtime. With uh, several songs already recorded uh, for your solo album, is it going to be more like Reflections was, where it's more, it's less Renaissance and more, I don't want to say soft rock, but uh, more ballady, uh, more... Yeah, got the mixture of everything in there. Okay. Exactly. Yeah, it's going to be my... <laughs> I, you know, I've never fit into that box properly right. of what a genre should be, so it's whatever I'm feeling at the time that uh, that we're, that I'm going to be putting out there. So, yep, just finding my way through the music and letting it letting it pull me in whatever direction it wants to be in. So All right. it'll be sort of similar to that. Okay, very cool. And, of course, that'll also be uh, listed on the Blackmore's Night site, correct? Of course, yes. We'll do black. Well, you know, we've got all the social media going. We've got now. I finally talked Richie into doing social media. Like he doesn't do it. He tells me what to put on there. As it should so he's be. He's pulling the puppet strings, <laughs> but he's telling me this is the picture. This is what I want to say. So basically, he's doing it. It's all dictated through him. But he now has his own Instagram page. Wow. Um, he's got his own Twitter page. Of course, he has the. Uh, you know, we've got the three official uh, Facebook pages: Candace Knight, Blackmore Knight, Richie Blackmore. Uh, three Instagrams, Candace Knight, Richie Blackmore, and Blackmore's Knight, the two Twitter pages, even Tumblr, and then, of course, the dot-com pages. So we keep everything updated pretty much daily, actually. It's always changing daily. So wow. You've brought him kicking and screaming into the 21st century. <laughs> awesome. Through me. 
I'm awesome. the one kicking and screaming. <laughs> <laughs> well, Candace, thank you so much. Hang on the phone for a minute. We're going to close out for the audience here with a, a song that you mentioned features Autumn, your daughter, and uh, it's Silent Night off the new uh, the new album. 